Good morning, everyone. How is everybody doing this morning? We have myself, Greg, and Mags today. And if you guys didn't know, we we're having Greg on today for a little special feature on a new app he created. Pretty cool. Well, let's let's see who's here. Who's here at the moment? So Your mama. We, oh, my mom is here. <laughs> <laughs> so we have Tommy and Kay um, and Thomas and then my mom and we have Chris F. Where's Chris? And we have June. Hello, June. Karen. Uh, hi, Karen. June says hello from New Hampshire. Chris, aren't you in New Hampshire too? I feel like, or am I crazy? New Hampshire. New it Hampshire. is New Hampshire. Uh oh. So, yeah. Yeah. So, today we are doing things a little differently. <laughs> we're going to be, well, first we're going to start off with Greg and he's going to talk about his new app and then he has to leave. But then Mags and I will be going into some sourcing techniques and bios and accuracy since that's our theme for the year. Yay. It's going to be, it's going to be great. And so hello, Pilla Littner. Littner? Did I say that correctly? From Norway? Littner or Leitner from Norway. You probably are my cousin. <laughs> and then we have Charles in here, and then Catherine Hondros from New Jersey. Welcome. And if you're trying to figure out what we're doing and why we're just like, <laughs> um, it's um, it's because we're just kind of waiting for the people who are joining to catch up. It takes, uh, there's a bit of a lag between real time and us time. Mm -hmm. And we, we, you know, if we had a TARDIS, it wouldn't be an issue, but we don't. Yeah, yeah. but unfortunately we don't. And then Lynette is here and Betsy Co. And then... I forget who Anna Z -Z -Z. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> is. Anna is. Like really Kay says, we are all cousins. We're all cousins. Yes, yes, hey, we, Kay. Kay. yes we are. So I since I guess we'll go ahead and go ahead and start with what Greg is going to show us. Greg, what are you going to show us today? Greg, Greg's going to show us something? You. I'm going to show you a new app. So how about I um, share my screen? Okay. There it is. Oh, there it is. What is your new app? What is it? Tell us. It's called It's called the DNA Confirmation app, Citation Maker app. <laughs> so um, on the right side, you'll see the what the, the app. And on the left side, I've got a little PowerPoint to, uh, to guide us through the, as I walk you through this. So... Um, what is this you might ask so um first of all um a little bit of a, a a quick tutorial it's sort of like the previously on if you have just came back from a an episode of grandma's jeans or something um to get you into this <laughs> <laughs> previously on did the dna wiki show um uh we all know what dna is and if we don't i don't have time to explain that right now but um uh, a dna confirmation um, one of the, the exciting things about DNA is that, um, and about WikiTree, is that it allows you to record, um, if you've taken DNA tests, um, the information that, about the test that you've taken, so that any potential cousins that you have can, find, um, can compare results with your, with your results and, um, and uh, find matches. Now, DNA alone cannot prove relationships, but um, the power, one powerful thing is that if you've got um, some genealogy that proves two people are related, DNA can confirm that relationship. They can say, yes, this is, this is for sure uh, the relationship between two people. And the way I like to think about it is that DNA confirmation, it can reinforce the branches of our collective family tree. And so that's what the, the confirmation basically is, is just confirming, the DNA confirms the relationship you've already proven with um, and DNA. what do you have to do with a source? For a source, you, any source ever, you have to have a citation to go with it. That's exactly it. And so a confirmation citation is that source, is basically that source citation that explains 
why you can't reach this conclusion how you, and how you reached it. And it has to explain enough information that other people can follow up on that and, and um, verify it. Um, right. But the other, the, the cool thing about the DNA confirmations is because when you give that information, then anyone else who's investigating that, any potential cousins could use that for, to, to the, for themselves to find out if they're related to one or two of those people who are mentioned in that source citation. So in a sense, it's another form of cousin bait. Um, so there you go. Um, now, the thing is, um, like, like a lot of, uh, especially uh, beginning wiki treers, uh, writing a proper source citation of any sort can be a little complicated. And the DNA citations, um, they do look, when you first look at them, they uh, can be a little overwhelming because there's so many components and they're all fairly technical and stuff. Um, so that was one of the reasons why I thought this kind of app might be helpful. So um, basically, how does it work? Um, the app will guide you through the process of creating your citation. It asks you for information piece at a time and then taking that that information it assembles it all into the verbiage that you need to include in the sources section of your profile and it gives instructions on how to do exactly that so i'm going to show two examples today um so here's uh example one this is a cousin match that i have from ancestry so this is my cousin liam um and he, Ancestry says that Liam is a uh, second cousin. Their, their predicted relationship based on their algorithm is that Liam is probably a second cousin. He's, uh, he's sharing, uh, the, he shares 239 centimorgans um, across nine segments. Um, and that information was in the Ancestry DNA matches. Now this screenshot, in case you're wondering, because it doesn't look like what you would see on a web page, uh, this screenshot actually came from my Ancestry app that I used in my iPad as I was preparing for this. Um, so that was why it may look a little different than your Ancestry matches, but it's all, it's the same information. It's just formatted a little different. Um, so now the other thing, because uh, uh, my tree in Ancestry and Liam's, um, match each other, Ancestry uh, with one of their tools also um, predicted that our relationship is this, which is actually exactly the relationship that we have proven that we are related to each other. So this is in fact um, the what we have proven genealogically, this is how we're related. Um, so we have a common great set of great grandparents. So Donat Cloutier is my great grandfather and Marie Agustine Trudel, his wife, would, um, is my is our our common great grandmother um so this is the genealogical proof and the dna that ancestry um, has confirmed that we are in fact um second cousins so now how do i take this information and use the app so on the app i'm going to um step one is to put in who is the dna tester so there's my wiki tree id and then um now Liam isn't on Wikitree right now, so I'm just going to put, um, I'm just gonna uh, put Liam D, his name. And then, go next. And so then the next step is I have to uh, explain, now how am I related? Uh, what, or what's the common ancestor that Greg and Liam have? And so our common, <laughs> you see, I've gone through this before already. <laughs> um, our common ancestor is my, are my great grandparents. And then I choose, I've got a drop down list of, because it's connected to the WikiTree database. Um, it, there's a list of all my possible gra uh, great grandparents, and it's actually Dona and Marie Augustine. So I pick them, and then I go next. And now, so that is the relationship I have to our most common, our most recent common ancestors. Now I have to tell the app what is Liam's connection. So they're his great grandparents as well. And then the app will show you a little mini tree. And what you have to do is check the tree and does that match the other information that you have genealogically? Now I just happen to have these two side by side, so that's kind of handy. Um, because uh, because I logged in to Wikitree, it knows exactly my path. Um, it doesn't know Liam because he's not in Wikitree. Um, so I do have to fill in, choose um, some buttons there. Um, and then once I've done that, then I can click next. And then the next step 
Now, this is important because if you can't answer yes to all three of these questions, then you can't, you haven't done enough um, research to, uh, to make a valid confirmation. Um, you need to go back and do something. So first of all, you do have to confirm that your relationship has, does match your traditional genealogy, that you've done the, the work and, and we have done this. Um, and have, has this test gone through a, a DNA testing company or a third party site like GEDmatch? And that is true, it's gone through Ancestry. And the third one is, does the predicted relationship from the company match the relationship that you have proven from your traditional genealogy? And in this case, it, it's a bang on match because it's um, answers to said we were second cousins. Our genealogy, genealogy um, research has proved that we're second cousins as well. So it's bang on. So I can say yes, go on to the next. Then, uh, so the next thing is you just fill in the details of the match and as you can see, I was uh, uh, testing this before we, we did this. So I've already pre-filled this in, but you'd put, you pick your company from this dropdown. You put in the amount of the match, which was 239 centimorgans. And you can choose either to put the amount in by centimorgans or by percentage. So some companies like 23andMe, they like to give their, uh, the amount of shared DNA by a percentage. So if that's how it's reported, then that's, the, that's what you would choose. The number of segments, and then you put down what the prediction is from the company, because that's important information as well. Let me click on next. And this is the final stage. So here it tells you exactly what to do to uh, write down your, or to record the confirmation. So there's two steps to it, basically. The first one is that you have to actually go to the wiki profile um, and uh, uh, click on these buttons that uh, change the option or that that define how the parents are are related, because the confirmations actually go from from child to parent. So you go to the child's profile, and this confirmation uh, this uh, confirms that this child is in fact the DNA um, is related by DNA to the, the mother or the father. In this case, because it's a couple, it's to both the mother and the father. So. Our most common ancestor, as you remember, was Donna Cloutier and, Ma and Marie Augustine Trudel. Um, so her, uh, her, their daughter, my grandmother, um, uh, Germaine Cloutier. So we go to her page, and you can just click on this right here uh, in the app, and it'll automatically open up her page. And now I'm going into edit mode, and you see here along the side. Right now, I was confident that Donna and Marie Augustine were Germaine's parents. But now because of this match, I know for a fact that the DNA proves that they are. So I'm con so we're confirming that. So I'm going to click on these radio buttons here. And then so that's step one. That's the that's telling Wikitree that we're confirming that relationship. Step two is putting in the citation itself. So if we scroll down, there's the citation. Oh yeah <laughs> and it's, it looks a little like gobbledygook right it's 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 you know you don't really want to have to type in all this stuff there's squarely brackets there because um there's a special template for ancestry there's square brackets so that you, you get a nice wiki tree link um and but all that information that we typed in is right there um so we can copy that um i'm going to click the big copy it's highlighted to give you a sort of a visual clue that it's been caught. See that it's done, yeah. Okay. And then when I go back to my profile, I'm going to go, where's the profile? There we go. And right at the very bottom, there we have uh, uh, in the sources section. So at the bottom of the sources section, I'm just going to paste. I'm on my keyboard here, I'm hitting uh, Command V to paste. And there it is right there. And then the la the there's sort of a third step because you do have to put a uh, an explain your changes. You always have to document what change you've made to a profile. So I'm saying uh, adding citation uh, source citation for, for DNA confirmation. How fun! Oh, that was pretty easy, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna save that. Boom. Okay. So. We did have a quick question from Chris. It says, what if 
It says your fourth through sixth cousins on ancestry, but yet your third cousins on the paper trail. Well, from what I understand is if the map, if the 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 company prediction does not match with your own uh, genealogy, then you didn't need to do more genealogy. You need to the, those two have to be in line, or there has to be some explanation. Now, um, it's possible that you might. Uh, I've often seen the, the reverse, that Ancestry says that they're closer than they really are because if you're related multiple ways, um, like you may be actually fourth cousins, but it says you may be second cousins once removed, but that's because you share multiple great-great-grandparents or something like that. Right, and Karen had a comment before about uh, there there might be a higher cinnamorgans because of an endogamy. In exactly. an area, so endogamy could affect that uh, that predicted relationship as well. Yeah, and my French Canadian side is full of that. I've got so many matches <laughs> on ancestry, you know, and um, some of them, you know, you have like we're cousins, but you know, I'm cousins with Justin Trudeau as well, you know, but <laughs> we don't hang out <laughs> on weekends, <laughs> <laughs> like so, 9th or 11th or something. The, um, I didn't see in the drop down. Does is Jed match is an option? Jed for, matches yeah, okay because i know that some people they take and test on different sites but then they're this and then they put it on yeah. you know jed match so okay yeah and peter roberts has done a nice video which we were going to share um and he uses jed match uh to go through um how he use uh, uses this tool for uh for a citation so that was nice now i'm going to do one more quick example and then i do have to go but okay. let me show you my second example um so my second example, um, this is a cousin. Um, my match is with him on my heritage. Um, but I, I know, I recognize his name and he is actually on Wikitree. He has a profile on Wikitree. And from our genealogy work, I know that he is the great grandson of Desiree Labonté and Marie-Josephine Dumont. So, um, and here's all the information about the match uh, from my heritage. So um, now let's see, I don't remember his, uh, well, actually I do remember what his, his uh, Wikitree um, profile or login is. So I may just go straight to that. Um, uh, can you make your website screen bigger so everybody can see that? Unless you need the, the um, slide uh, on the side. I'll make that a little bit bigger okay. or shorter, small. The opposite of bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to go back to step one. Okay, and now this, the DNA tester um, is going to be uh, Claude Loranger. Now I happen to know what his Wikitree ID is. From here. Um, if I didn't know how to do that, then what I could have do is I could go to my family tree. I know that he is the great grandson of Desiree and Marie Josephine. So I could click on Desiree and then go to look under his descendants, there would be Claude. And if I clicked on Claude, then I would see that his ID is 166, and then I could actually copy that. Oopsie, I copied the wrong one, but anyways, that's another way of getting that information. Uh, so I put this in, and then, now the funky thing about this is, because this is connected to the Wikitree database, Remember the, those, those middle two steps, the, steps two and three that I had done with Liam, I had to say how I was related to our most common ancestor and then how Liam was related. Well, because we're both on Wikitree, I don't have to do that. It automatically gives me the mini tree that shows how I and Claude are related to each other. So that saves some time and I'm gonna go next. Um, I still have to answer these three questions and they are still all yeses. Um, and now I do have to put in this. Now this is from my heritage, so I click on that, and it is uh, now 220.9 Senate organs across 10 segments, and it says we are first cousin twice removed uh, to second cousin once removed. Okay, and then here it is. So now we can add the confirmation to. Uh, Desiree Le Bonté and Marie Josephine de, uh, Dumont. So again, it gives me the, the person's page that I have to edit. So I click on that, go into edit mode, 
And so I can confirm that Desire and Josephine are the parents. And then I click down here. There is our citation. I can put that in. Mm -hmm. uh, far enough. Place that in. And, uh, and one more thing that this yay, wasn't that now if if you were if you're Matt, if you've got a cousin on WikiTree, this makes it even easier to do. Um and this is up to third cousin. This doesn't up go beyond third. Yeah, cousin. this version of it will work with when you can have one match with another, and that does only and work. And this is all just autosomal. All autosomal, yeah. If you have a match that is fourth cousin or beyond, or third cousin once removed and or more removed, um, then you need to use triangulation. And when I leave, Megs could explain more about that later. Um, <laughs> but there is one last thing I want to show you before I do have to take off. Um, so we have just... Um, Help me where where was let me click on Claude and I'm gonna put go to here my relationship to Claude so it's gonna show here's how we're related okay we're second cousins once removed there's Claude's um, path to Desiree our great grandfather uh, and my path and you can see now my path is DNA confirmed all the way up to him um, Claude's path is not confirmed, or we haven't done it on Wikitree, but because of this relationship, we can. We can yeah. confirm this because it works both ways. Hmm. And in the app, look what happens. I've got a <gasps> bonus section. Oh, bonus. So all of those other relationships between the most common ancestor and the two test makers, um, you can get all of those extra confirmations right here. So. We can so for every step. So every parent child step in that ladder. <laughs> you can do it. You know, you it's so exciting. Copy, boom. And there's a quick link to each of the profiles. So you don't even have to go hunting in WikiTree to find where the profiles are. You just click, boom, copy, paste, put in your reason. Make sure you put the reason in. And um we bow down to Greg. Click. Yeah, Greg has been working on this for a few weeks, and um, Peter and I have been testing it a lot and having some input. Uh, it's just amazing the things that Greg has been able to do for the DNA Innovators Project. DNA Innovators. <laughs> Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> bonus. That's great. Awesome I love bonus. that. You There's bonus. Bonus. Your face when he said bonus, you were like. <laughs> 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 oh, that's awesome! No. I'm gonna go confirm some stuff now. I've never that's done good. that before. Okay. Now I'm gonna go well, confirm stuff okay. with DNA. That Wait, where can I'm gonna put a post this? to this. I'm gonna put a post about this uh, on G2G when I get back. Um, uh, in my other life, I'm a, a music director for a church, and I have to go play for a funeral right now. So oh. um, I really don't want to be late for the late person who's funeral I'm playing for. Yeah, oh, that was bad. He's musical and. I know. <laughs> Um, so I wish I could stick around and talk and answer any things in the comments, but I will watch this on replay. And um, yeah, uh, and I did. I, I I should I should fess up. I found one little bug this morning just before we went live. So if you want to, if you wouldn't mind waiting until I do the post this afternoon on GTG, um, I just want to make sure that it's you know Perfect. I don't want the first experience to have a bug. Yeah. Yes. It's awesome. So Thank, you. Thank you, Greg. Greg. Yay. Yay. Thank you. Thank yeah, you all then, very much. Just if Greg's in a put by Greg, you can go, Greg. If I'm we'll sorry. Put the I'm link it's for, okay. I don't want to go. In the G2G post, you're going to put the link to the video as well, right? I will. Yeah. Yes, great. Actually, can I can I put a link to this video? Because, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. we don't want you to link to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, have, a, anyway. have a good uh, service, and we will hear from you later. Bye. Okay, talk later. Bye-bye. Well, that's exciting. That is exciting. And if you guys do have questions, um, you can post them in that G2G post that Greg will post. Maybe I'll pin it. I don't know. Just look for it. Keep an eye out for it. I'll probably post it on Facebook and stuff too for you guys. But 
that's that's exciting. I've never DNA confirmations have always just been very scary to me. So I just never have done it. Yeah, because you had to pick and pull lots of information from lots of different places. It's not like citing a book. You know, it's it's there's a lot of moving parts that, that go into it. So it's it's great that Greg has been able to do this. And okay. as he expands this app, he'll be expanding it to include higher levels of confirmations as well. Yeah. Are there any quick questions about this? That um, that someone was asking, I guess, about the triangulation. Is there anything extra to do with someone that is triangulating with you? And I think Greg is working on. Yeah, um, we're going to be working on that part as well. That has a few more working parts. Um, it has three people involved. And that's something that Greg's going to be working on in the future to be able to do the triangulated sec sections uh, for on down the line. Um, you do this for each cousin you have a DNA match that confirms a most common recent ancestor. If you have three cousins from the same family who are confirming the same ancestor, you really only need one. Mm -hmm. So you could do all three, but it would just take up space in your sources section on your profile, which we're going to be talking about profiles. Yes. And, biographies. Yes. and then I just wanted to say... We have Steve watching. If you guys don't know, Steve is our new team member on week three. So, hi, Steve. Thanks for watching. Yes, Steve. Team. Woo. team Winky Tree. <laughs> so, now we'll go into our other part, which kind of is the same of accuracy and sourcing and all of that. But we'll start off with talking about our profiles of the week so we can actually be looking at the profiles of the week as they are usually beautifully written, sourced, and bioed. Um, so there's our suffragettes this week in, in honor of Women's History Month. One so quick question here from Chris. Yes, it, um, the very first example he gave was for somebody who was not a member of WikiTree. So yeah. yes, it will work, sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. So we have our suffragettes. So we're going to go through them. What is a suffragette? A suffragette is someone who works towards for women's suffrage. So people, so women's equal rights, you know, the right to vote. The and vote. we have a lot of people, a lot of women on this list that are in not just the United States. We have some from New Zealand, England. Um, I think there was one from Norway? I did I maybe I didn't remember correctly, but we'll oh, go through all of them really quickly. Our first one and our main one is um Kate Shepherd um from New Zealand. It's actually she was, she was born in England, but she was is famous in New Zealand. And she was the New Zealand was the first country to introduce universal suffrage and the first country for women to get the vote. And it was pretty much thanks to Kate Shepard. Um, her work had considerable impact on women's suffrage movements and in, ever, in several other countries. So, and then we'll just look at her profile really quickly. Uh, because we're this this year is our year of accuracy. And right now we are working on genealogy guest stars trees for the Wiki Tree Challenge. And, I, and it's important that we are putting our best foot out there and creating nice bios. They're accurately sourced. We're sourcing them correctly. And so I think looking at these profiles and then other profiles and how to source and write biographies is important. So we're doing that's what kind of what we're doing today. So adding uh, little pictures, stickers. Now, you might not have every bio you write be long like this, but still having a little snippet of their life with sources, a citation attached is always welcome. So that is Kate Shepard. She has a very long bio, very well written. So, and it's it's there's lots of money on it. Yeah, because she's on the <laughs> mm -hmm, New Zealand. I know the New Zealand project was very excited. The New Ze everybody knew we're very excited that she was featured. So Yay. next we have is Mary Lee from Ireland. And you guys go ahead and figure out what your relationships are to mm -hmm. these people and find out who post who your closest relationship is. She was an Irish Australian suffragette suffragist so there's suffragette and suffragist and i learned the difference between these 
I won't go into it too much, but for guy for you guys, um, if you want to look up the difference, there is a difference of oh, for suffrage, the different terms for it. So where was I? So she was a social reformer in South Australia, South Australia, and the first Australian state in which women gained the right to vote in state elections, and the first in the world where women could be elected members of parliament. So, and you see here on her profile, we got some stickers. And people love stickers. They make they give a little bling to your profiles. And then we have a suffragette movement sticker. So, did Kate have that on there? No, she doesn't have the sticker on there. Darn. Got to put her. Got to put a sticker on there for her. Then we have different um, where you were born stickers. Like she was born in Ireland. And then we have. People put snippets of uh, newspaper clippings. And you see we have a whole bunch of little citations. You can you can see me highlighting them, I guess, a little bit for proof of where the information came from, which is very important. That's called sourcing. Sourcing, which was what kind of Greg was talking about. It that's, was. That's writing so important. You wanna, a source. You want to know where your information came from. And you want it to be as specific as possible so somebody else can go back and find exactly what you found. So next on our list is Marguerite DeWitt Schlumberg. I think that I did was that really right. good. Thank you. I might have practiced beforehand. Yeah. <laughs> so she was a French philanthropist and feminist, and she was president of the French Union for Women's Suffrage. And she was awarded the Legion of Honor for her work during World War I. And then we have Summer. And look, sometimes we write their bio in the lang their native language. We yes. can definitely do that. So if you speak not English, different language, and you... <laughs> like this, I know this one. I know, like, Isabel from... Isabel, she'll do this a lot. And other people from the people... Yes the profiles that are part of their project that are not, you know, English wasn't their native language, writing their biography in their native language is important. You know, for cousin bait and for, to get more people in that aren't native English speakers. Cousin bait. Yes, cousin bait, exactly. And you see their sources here, I can I have no idea what they say, but I feel like it's pretty exact. You have, it looks like there's marriage there. And it probably has the type of marriage and the page. Type, and type of marriage. The type of like. <laughs> it was. Uh, Stop it, Megs. <laughs> Struggling a little bit because the French is throwing me off. Oh, that's so that it's a marriage where I guess the archives. And looks like there's a page there, page number, but being exact, because even though maybe we can't click on a link to find it, if we wanted to find it and we spoke French, we would be able to find it if we wanted to. <clears throat> Next on our list is Irene Marriott. She was born in England and in Canada. She, she was a Canadian women's farm leader, activist, and politician. She was one of the five women who became known as the famous five who asked the Supreme Court of Canada to answer the question, does the word persons in section 24 of the British North American Act include female persons? <laughs> Got her in a fancy hat. Uh, let's see. Let's look at her profile. We got some more stickers. We have the suffragette sticker on here, and also what's always really important is adding the if you're if you're linking to if you're talking about other people that's not her linking their to their WikiTree profile, so people know who you're talking about. And wonderful little snippets of their profile show up when you hover over. And then sources, a lot of encyclopedia because we don't have any actual <clears throat> records for her, but we have the find a grave. Love. Next we have Catherine Hepper. Hep Hep Hepburn. I'm, I'm that was also a bit difficult. To her. You are? But I probably am too. Or she goes by Kit Hepburn. 
when she co-founded the Hartford Equal Franchise League in 1913, and later she joined the National Women's Party. She earned an AB in history and political science and a master's degree in chemistry and physics. And she was the mother of the famous actress, Catherine Hepburn. Wait, hold on. I skipped. Did I skip something? No, I don't think I did. But there we go. And she also was crusading leadership in birth control movement. So there you go. <clears throat> so one of the kids in the picture are is Catherine Hepburn. Mm hmm. That's fun. And so we see her lit children are listed here. Um, so it would have been nice if we could probably put the links to each of the children's profiles in there as well. While they are up here at the top, it's always nice to kind of include it in the bio as well. Let's, uh, let's see. So we have more sources. So we have a census source here taken from Family Search. Using Family Search is usually the best um, because all of their records are free to view for everybody. But sometimes there are records that are just behind a paywall, unfortunately. So if you are using a source that's behind a paywall, you want to still give as much information as possible, like it does for Family Search. Hopefully we'll see an example. Unfortunately, Ancestry does not lay out a beautiful citation like Family Search does for us. <laughs> so you probably have to put in a little bit more legwork making a source. So next we have Wilhelmina Lensing or Drucker. Her whole during her whole life, she held lectures about equality of men and women and and the right of education and work for women and world peace. And she was in the Netherlands. I think that's where I was thinking of Norway. I don't know the N, the N word. And they're both N words. And so we have the two sources here too, from one from Family Search, it looks like, and one from a Netherlands-based one. Is it behind a paywall though? Let's see. Let's click it. See what happens. No, it's not loading. Oh no. Very slow. Oh, look, we can just see it. That's great. Maybe. Oh, well, it's a newspaper. Nice. Very cool. Nice. Yes. Well, I was going to say something in regards to. Oh, Family Search also has given us permission to copy the archives the images for the, their archives into Wikitree with proper, you know, obviously telling, putting the source there, you know, from we, from family search, yada, yada, yada. But we do have permission from them. So you are able to put pictures of sources on there. But don't fill the whole profile page. No, that. we don't need their whole will on every single page on Wikitree, no. But if something pertinent, you know, that you want to put on there, maybe the death record or something, you're more than welcome. So next on our list is Emmeline Pankhurst and Golden, which is kind of like Golden. I kind of... <laughs> kind of. I don't know. Is, is there any relation really to... No, not really. Okay. Got to have that A in there. Oh, the O and the A make a big difference. So... Emmeline, she led a passionate group of women who often clashed with police and the public. They disrupt, they disrupt, they disrupted public meetings, broke shop windows, and set post boxes and buildings on fire. That was terrible. In 1910, during demonstrations outside the houses of parliament, there was violence and arrests. And and oh, so the police were accused in behaving with unnecessary brutality, and the 18th became known as Black Friday. She was arrested various times. Yep. So part of the she was in England. She was English suffragette. British suffragette. And her her profile has a lot of stickers and photos. Let's see her sources. I want to show an ancestry one. Well, there'll probably be one somewhere. I have a few 
example profiles as well. Next is Aletta Jacobs from the Netherlands as got well. A question about uh, can you explain what you mean by not filling the source with family search links? They are long. We were talking about the links. We were talking about the, the photos. Images. Yeah, the photos. So, yeah, if you snip, if if I copy something over to be able to show an an entry, I usually just do a snippet of the entry. Mm -hmm. But some people would like to be able to put the entire image up, and it, you can't do that on the profiles very easily. And if you do it a lot, there's not much there other than sources. You want to hear have some beef to the biography, which we're going to be talking about shortly. So, yeah. So just. Put up images wisely, especially source images. You know, we don't also thinking about how much space it takes up as well. You know, we're WikiTree, while we have a big server, you know, we're not an image hosting site either. We're more of a genealogy site. So be yes. wary, you know, like we said, you don't need to put every single page of your ancestors 30 page will on WikiTree on their website. Now you're able to transcribe it on a free space page if you want to. Yes. So, so next we have, so like I said, Aletta Jacobs. She's from the Netherlands. She was the first Dutch female that graduated at the University of the Netherlands and she studied medicine and became the first Dutch female physician. She was committed and dedicated her life to health, freedom and equality of women and women's suffrage. And so our father was also a doctor. Got a lot of photos in here as well. And that's early times for women being doctors too. That's, that's cool. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff in here. And then her sources, probably a lot from the Netherlands. Probably some of these could be written out but they all have links and I, I don't think most of them are behind a paywall so just kind of think of that if you are putting a link to a source you still want to describe what it is because maybe the link dies maybe something gets um yep routed rerouted that's probably not the right word yeah. redirected <laughs> redirected yeah. and, if and that way you can link, go back and you can like search for it and find a better link or the new link for it. Mm -hmm. So if you have the details of what the link is, somebody can find it if that link doesn't work. And the last on our list is Elizabeth Caddy Stanton, who kind of was best friends with Susan B. Anthony. <laughs> um, she was born and died in New York. She caused the passage of a women's property bill in the New York legislator, legislature and her work as an anti-slavery advocate and claimant for women's rights. She also found time to devote cause, the cause of temperance. She was one of the founders of Loyal League. And like I said, she worked a lot with Susan B. Anthony. Oh, my, my thing just fell. Yes. <laughs> my, ba <laughs> my background just fell. So this yes, is, this is a low tech, <laughs> low budget. It's not a real green screen. It's just a. It's a tapestry. A tape to my lamp. <laughs> so we got a little bit. Caddy probably could use some love with sources, but those are our, those are our suffragettes. That's it. Do we have any? <laughs> Stop it, Chris. It is very professional. So I wanted to show some other profile, unless anybody had any questions or wanted to talk about the suffragettes. We're gonna kind of go into looking at other profiles and there are sourcing help pages and how to source. And if you have any, <laughs> yes, I do need a clothespin. When you have any questions about sourcing or biographies, we will do that. So these are a couple, the next two are going to show are actually from the week two challenge that our volunteers have worked on. And this is an example. It is 
Uh, it doesn't have pictures in it, and you're, you don't have to have pictures in your biography. Because you can't find pictures, you can't find them. Not everybody will have photos. But this is still a very nice bio, and the, you know, it lists all of the facts of the person. And you see here, um, they added because they know they got married, but not really sure when, so they added a citation needed. That's always nice to know, to let people know that we don't have a source for that fact yet. And then we have some research notes here. Research notes you wanna use if, for basically if you're not sure of something, you can add the notes there. So then the next person who comes in and looks at this profile, they're able to see where you left. And we have some good sources here. All of them are from Family Search. But you see that, for instance, this one here, there's a link to an archive, but then it also has everything else you need to be able to find that if that link did not work. So it's always, like I've said, you want to most detailed source that you can, even if it's not formatted correctly. Maybe you don't know the order stuff's supposed to go in. It's, but like, like, it's a cookie crumb trail for somebody following along behind you. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then we have this one. This one did have some photos and also a sticker. Like we have a migration sticker here. And they grabbed a photo of, um, I guess, just a standard farm in that county where they lived. Pip says he uses research notes a lot, especially for more profiles needed. And there's also a category for profiles needed as well. Categories are also a wonderful thing. This one's very, very long. And if you see these citations, little three in the two, and we have research notes here too. And then we have the sources. We have, see look, here's an Ancestry one. So obviously Ancestry did not give us this beautiful source because they don't do that. <laughs> they usually just give you, oh, this is the Iowa district probates from this year to this year. And that's usually all you get. You kind of have to put in the rest of the work. So you put, you want to put, you know, the name of the person for the probate the year, if you have the page the number, page number um, if there's like a certificate number on there, any kind of numbers there you want to put on there. And, and this one is a death certificate, which um, was gotten from the Ohio Department of Vital Statistics, which I guess there's no, maybe wasn't found on Family Search or Ancestry, but they were able to go and find it somewhere. So they have the name of the person, the file number, and the date. So you just want to extract as much information when you're sourcing. And this one has a lot of sources on it. And here's another one for a probate from Ancestry. So now if I wanted to verify this source, I can go, like if I have an Ancestry account or I can maybe find it somewhere else, I can try to find that with the same information they have there. Well, that, that's pretty much, and we have a lot of help pages for sourcing. Where are they? Oh, we have a sources style guide and you can find all of those in help, right? Sources and style guide here on the side. So you're able to find these quickly and these two, and also shows you here how to source. If you're having trouble figuring out the format for sourcing, you want to, you can always come here. And you're also more than welcome to ask in G2G. If you're having trouble formatting a source, or you're not sure how to source something, you can ask in G2G. And then biographies are also very important. Because it's kind of what sets Wikitree apart from other sites because we're able to add that extra like color. we were saying yeah extra color and i if you're ever looking for ideas to how to do your bios we have our example help page which you're able to see like let's see let's look at this 
Gus Grissom. Look, let's look at his profile. And you're able to see how they did it. You can go into the edit tab and see how they formatted it. Everybody, everybody does their biographies a little bit differently. None, no, none are the same. I have not seen two biographies that are similar. So it depends on each person's life and the person and the volunteer who's writing the biography. So, oh, but look, this is not a good source. Oh, but look, maybe that's the citation, but we have the full source here. So that works. You never want to just put 1940 census. That's a no-no. <laughs> Oh, June just put up, I'm going to put it up here real quick, how she does a death record. She, for private holding death records, so I'll just put that up real quick. But. Yep, citation needed. That's how you That's format that. that. Oh, no, oh, wait, no, it's wait. not. It's not. No, it's actually double bracket. You do a reference. You do a ref tag, and then do citation needed, and it creates a citation needed. We can actually look. It's actually here in this one. I think. Yeah. We can look at the edit tab really quickly, and it shows. We can see how it's done. Oh, it's a little. Actually, a little brackets. Yep. Double bra uh, brackets. It's a uh, template. Mm hmm Squiggly brackets. And it's Blackest. also, if you guys don't know, I don't have this turned on automatically, but I like using the enhance, enhance editor sometimes because it makes it, when you're putting in sources and links, it makes it easier for you to see. So I like doing that. So you see it kind of singles out your... I have... Wait, something's wrong with my mic? Oh, Mags has an echo. Is there an echo? Yep. Or was. Now it's gone. I don't know. I don't know. So, okay. okay. As long as everything is good now. Curly brackets. I like that squiggly brackets. Curly brackets. Okay. So, also I wanted to make a note that. Note? A note. I wanted to make a note for GEDCOMs. If you are working on a profile that was a GEDCOM import, you are able to delete all of the stuff that is non-pertinent on there. Gobbledygook. Gobbledygook. And I wonder if there is... I'm pretty sure everybody knows what I'm talking about if you've seen it before. Basically, when you import a GEDCOM, it creates all of this nonsense that doesn't make any sense. And a lot of times they'll add sources at the bottom that aren't really sources at all either. You have to look through because sometimes those sources, especially from Ancestor, will have a citation embedded in, in the big paragraph that they have. But you can delete everything else and then create a citation that's just for that GEDCOM and mm -hmm. identify the person who uploaded it. Mm -hmm. So, that, I mean, there's no way they're going to know what they had and what GEDCOM and from 2011. But... You might be able to go back and find out more information if you actually know who uploaded the JetCom. I always do that in the acknowledgement sections, even if I don't leave it as a source. Mm -hmm. So this is, we also have a help page on JetCom Creative Biographies, so you kind of know what is okay to delete and what is not, or what needs to be checked. Because there are like the links to Ancestry profiles or links to Ancestry that um, you want to make sure are viable or not. I love an accolade means hug in English for Aww. what curly brackets in French, accolades. That's cute. That is so sweet. And this is what I was talking about, a weird source that the JEDCOMs create. Like it creates a, let's see if I can zoom in. I was gonna say, zoom, zoom in, man, these, zoom. It makes these ugly, I hate, I hate these. They're a pain in the butt to delete. But thankfully, we do also have that j beautiful GEDCOM cleaner. Is it linked on here? The app? But I don't think it is. But we have that GEDCOM, the automatic GEDCOM cleaner app. That is also amazing. I feel like it should be, we should have it on here for people 
to easily find. But that is Jedcom. Just delete all the junk that's there. Just delete it. Get rid of it. We don't. We don't need it. Let's didn't, see if there's anything Steve, else. Did I Stephen? Want. Did Stephen write that one? Did Stephen write which one? The Jedcom cleaner. Uh, I don't know who wrote it off the top of my head. I don't see the. I don't see it in the apps. I'm looking in the apps place. Uh, it's called it, like the A D A G. AG something. Jedcom. Here, I can just search Jedcom. I love that you can search help pages. You can search anything. There he is. Um, here it is. I'll give you the link for it. Okay. Here we go. Boop ba -da doo. Oh, okay. It's a, it's a space page. Well, the space page talks about the app, and then you can grab the app as well. And that helps you clean up Jedcom junk if you're scared. But you still need to have a watchful eye over it when you're using this. So here. Yes, we it is a Chrome extension, Tommy Buck. Tommy Buck wanted to know if that was a Chrome extension. It is. It's an automatic Jedcom cleanup. Chrome extension that allows the users to reformat a profile. Mm -hmm. And we've had Hiller. There is a, if you look on YouTube, there is a live stream that we did about it with Hillary. So you can go and watch it if you want. And then I just wanted to show, because like I was saying, not every single bio is going to be really long and full of photos. I wanted to show my ancestors bio that I did. It's really short. I put his parents and I have this citation. It was his death record that proved that, you know, I have his census records that proved he lived in the same place the whole time. And then, then his death and the citations that list that. So it doesn't always have to be really long. It can be really short and to the point. But I do have photos of him on the side and he is part of my name study. So I have the name study sticker. Yeah, he does have a nice dash. This one, he looks kind of creepy in this one, not going to lie. Not going to lie. <laughs> if there were six foot marks, if there were foot marks on those lines behind him, I would think he was in a lineup. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, this, but yeah, just wanted to show that, you know. It must be Joe's side of the family. No, it's actually my dad's. I'm just giving Joe a hard time because I can't. <laughs> So yeah, do we have any questions about sources? Oh, see, look, I did see my ancestry. This is my ancestry source that I created from the death record. That's how I did it. So I have the death certificate number. There was a spelling mishap on his death certificate. So oh. I, yeah. <laughs> and. Oh, when you're looking at the death records, um, look and see who the informant is. Uh, because sometimes those death records, just the, the people don't know anything about the person mm -hmm. that died. And so they're like the next door neighbor. And I think his mother's name was Gladys, you know, so check out and see who the informant was. Mm -hmm. And so you, this was even before I was using family search. I did a, I did a census record on my own too. I typed that out. Mm -hmm. Got the, Hey has a, a, a thing, auto text expander for either Chrome or Firefox is handy for working on bios. Does that make a bio more beefy? That's a question. I, don't know, I know if there's the bio creator app, but this is an extension for auto text expander. So, so yeah. And then just for one last little, in case everybody doesn't know, you're able to quickly search for sources for your ancestors right here. This little research, root search button. And you can do family search, ancestry, find a grave, and there's a whole bunch of more sites depending on what you use. And the US but, Genealogy Gophers is a really good one for finding mentions of your ancestors in obscure books. Hmm. Yes. 
I've never used that. Is that a free I one? do. Yes, it is. Hmm. I'll maybe check that out. You get to look up so many a month. And then, then oh. it's like, oh, if you want to donate, you can look up more. But if you don't, come back in a day or two. You'll be back up to your... Your Pip just gave me a profile that he did. Let's look at that real quick. That's a nicely written bio, Pip. That's a beautifully written bio. Mm-hmm. And see, he has all the children there. Beautiful. I love it. Well, and see, Pip does the pulls his censuses from Ancestry too. And Lynette wants to know if that's one of Dallin Quas's profiles. Well, actually, one that I showed before was which one was it? The Mitchell? I think it was this one. No, it was the next one. This one. This is one of Dallin's. Ah, yes. The... That was being worked on. So. So yes, and speaking of the Wiki Tree Challenge, they're doing great. They're working on, I know they've been focusing on Norway and we already have 80 bounty points. So that means eight brick walls broken for the most part. And so, yeah, it's, that's, do we have any questions about sourcing bios? It's very important for accuracy, you know, for Wiki Tree. You know, cousin bait, you know, this is a shared tree for all of us. So we want to make sure it looks good. It's accurate. Sourced sources. It's sourcing is part of our honor code, guys. So it is. So if there's. I didn't I didn't say any spoilers. I just said how many current bounty points we have. 80. I 80. bet that number changes between now and, and Wednesday. Oh, gene oh, they were saying Genealogy Gophers is a Dallin Quas project. Oh, cool. Oops, wrong one. There we go. Yes. So I guess I was not making the connection in my head. You know, I'm not going to answer this question to Chris because truly, if, if, a, if there's information about a person that's included, I mean, it's, it's a source. I guess the worst source would be hearsay. Um, mm -hmm. but you would have to, if, if I do an interview with my great grandmother and she tells me a story, I can source that by saying, I did this interview on this day with this woman in person and she had firsthand knowledge of this situation. This happened when she was a child and she watched it unfold or, or whatever. So mm -hmm. I guess, I guess that's the, the least, the, the least best source, but it's still a good source and hard to say. So I guess it depends, you know, primary sources is what you mostly want on a profile to prove right. their existence. But anything can be a source because we grabbed it. Now, a private genealogy sometimes is not a good source because they're just a compilation. But compilations can still be used. They just aren't a primary source. Mm -hmm. Now, and if you're making a profile, especially an old, like a pre-1700 profile with one of these, like, I think Karen was the Ancestry Millennial file. That's probably, you know, that's not reliable, you know. But you're able to still put that in there with other sources that you have on the profile. Yeah, personal knowledge. I, I love seeing the, the old GEDCOM import said this person was added because of personal knowledge. Um, I always giggle at, when it's on somebody who's, like, born in, in 1350. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So those are, that's sources. Um, primary sources are important too. You know, you want to make sure you have those primary sources. What is a primary source? It's from the, hold on my, my brain. It's the books the, and information that are contemporary. That at the time. It's, so yes. like the birth certificate is a primary source of their birth, unless it's a, one of those, my, my aunt's, my grandfather actually has one of those birth yeah, certificates have, my, done. My grandmother has one of those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the delayed birth certificate. Delayed birth certificate. So primary is, is a source that happened at the fact of whatever right. it is. So like a census record is a primary source for the time, you know, 
for where they lived for the at that moment. That family lived on that mm-hmm. street. But in that city. you know, that birth date on the census record isn't a, really a primary source for their birth. So kind of have to think of it that way. Each each source can be a primary source for a different fact. So at least you have one primary source for something. You're good to go. So and I think that that is all. We, we kind of went over our hour. We didn't really have time to do photos, but I really thought that this was important to talk about. And if you guys ever have ideas for Saturday live cast for us to talk about for questions like this time we had sources, we had Greg on talking about his new app. Please let me know. We can talk about whatever you want. I'm more than welcome. I welcome talking about stuff, learning about WikiTree, showing you guys how to use it. So just let me know. And with that, I guess we will head off. But don't forget Wednesday, we will be wrapping up Dallin's week and showing him what we found. So I'm giving a presentation this afternoon and I might be talking about WikiTree a bit. Don't you always just talk about WikiTree? It's just No, I talk about this is about actually about DNA tools. So I'm gonna cover the WikiTree DNA features because mm-hmm. it's and maybe we'll maybe we'll tool. do one more on DNA too. Maybe we'll have another since we talked about confirmations, maybe Mags will wanna do talk about some DNA later. But who knows?